Hello and welcome to Malmakes. Today we're doing a painting based on Stardew Valley. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. With my state fair around the corner and the harvest season coming up, I thought it would be fun to do the Stardew Valley Fair Grange display as a painting. And Grange displays do happen at actual fairs. People design tables um, to make like images, like they recreate famous paintings or just do patterns based on produce. And they get judged and get ribbons on that at fairs. So Stardew Valley has incorporated that into the game, into their fair. And I thought it was a really neat inclusion um, to have a table and to bring your produce to it and get judged on what you bring. So in game, you get nine spots on your table, but I started to add objects onto my table here and it just started to clutter up my image. So I had to kind of tone it down to five and leave it at that. Um, so the point in Stardew Valley to make the best display and get the most points is so you can afford the star drop, which is a great game item that you have. So I wanted to include that for sure. And then I started to pick some things from Stardew Valley that um, kind of meant something to me, but also were very Stardew Valley. So I picked the ancient fruit because that's very Stardew Valley um, and recognizable. I picked cheese because I'm from Wisconsin and I picked jam because I've been making a lot of freezer jams lately and it's been a lot of fun because I've never really done canning before now. And once I had those four items, I felt like I needed something across the front and then I started to look at different things and Wisconsin is part of the bread basket. So I thought it would be nice to add a bundle of wheat there because it looks nice aesthetically to drape off the edge of the table and it still kind of worked with my theme. So I'm doing this very similar to how I did the Animal Crossing still life where I had all of the five fruit from Animal Crossing. So I've toned the canvas with yellow ochre. I'm going to kind of build it in a similar way. So the first thing I wanna do is draw in everything so I have it cemented onto the canvas. And then I'll start to add some shadows using a solid yellow ochre instead of this transparent one. There's a few reasons to work on a toned canvas like this. For one, it's a little less intimidating than just a blank canvas. It's kind of already dirtied up and you don't feel like you're going to ruin something by starting it. It also helps give an inner light to your painting. So with all of my items here, I'm going to be using some glazes to make them transparent as I start filling in like the blue and the violet. And this yellow ochre I have here is going to help that glow and make them look better on the canvas. Um, it also helps with um, the little pin pricks you get sometimes where you're painting with the heavy body paint and you didn't put enough paint down and you can see just like a tiny pinhole of white canvas that didn't get covered in paint. So this helps with that because it gives a nice base layer and it's thinner than regular paint so it really soaks down into those spaces where the pinholes would happen. Um, so I like it for a few different reasons and I don't always use it but I feel like I should be using it more often. Um, now that I have all of my items drawn here and I'm happy with their placements and their sizes and everything, I'm going to start by adding a little bit of shading with more of this yellow ochre. Less of the transparent stuff um, and more of just like a full heavy body yellow ochre, just to bring in some of these shadows so I can start to see how this is going to look. My base layer is done with all the value in yellow ochre. Now I've erased any chalk that wasn't cemented down between these layers. So like this chalk here, that's never coming up, but it's going to get covered by paint later. So it's going to look messy for a bit, but that's okay, I'll work on that later. Um, so I wanna do a wash over all of these in their true color. So I'll do an orange wash for the cheese, a red wash where the jam goes. So I can start to see what the colors are going to look like as this comes together. 
Now I'm just doing that to cement down their shapes some more and start to look at the colors so I can start to compare how things are going to look. And then I'm going to work on the background and do the background completely 100% done and then start to build these items on top. So I wanna just see how they're going to look and those colors will help me judge what's going back here. The color blocking in of the glazing worked really well and now I can start to see how it's going to look when I'm done. Now I just have to work on the background here which is everything that's still yellow ochre. And I'm going to be doing a mottled background. So it's going to be blurry blotches of color in that space that kind of overlap and make a just pretty background. And I'm going with colors that are in that time of the game, like that season. So it's all going to be autumn colors, like some yellows and oranges, and just filling in little blotches of color across that whole space. I'm not painting what's in the background of that part of the game because the clinic and piers um, don't really work, I think, especially the clinic because it's almost a blue, like a bright blue color. And that's not going to work with how I want the painting to look. So I'm just going to go with all of these autumn tones and make the mottled background. So this is the first layer of the backdrop, and I wasn't sure if it was going to be one or two layers when I started it, but now that I have the first one down, there's a few things that I want to change about it. I think it looks good, mind you. I just think there's some things that I want differently for this particular painting. First off, I want it to be a smoother transition between some of these colors. This orange is kind of a harsh line right here. Um, and same in some of the other areas, I want it to be a bit softer on the transition between those. I also wanna bring some of this light stuff into like maybe up top here, just to have it have some different spaces instead of just one big bright area. The other thing is there's some brush marks. You can kind of see them scratched in right here. Um, there's a lot over here on the brown side of this. And I think, like I said, it looks good. It looks like a photography backdrop, like you'd see in a school picture, but I want it to be softer, more natural for the painting. So I'm going to do a second layer using all the same colors I have here that I had put down already. And then I think it'll really help bring it together. It took two layers to get the background where I was happy with it. And if I wanna go over it another time, I can always add more because I still have my colors. Maybe I wanna lighten up some of these other areas. But I really like the colors and the transition between all of them, so I'm going to move on to painting the objects. Now normally I work back to front and the table is the furthest thing back, but I'm not in the mood for painting that right now, so I'm going to paint the cheese and then the table. It is important for me to do the cheese first because it sits behind the jam and you'll be able to see a little bit of it through the transparent jam here in this jar. So I have to get that done first regardless.
I've been doing a few different layers on the cheese, so you can see it looks a lot more complete than the ancient fruit or the jam or anything. And it looks a lot better. I'm using different layers with my different colors like burnt umber and Hansi yellow with gloss glazing liquid. So I mix this with the color and it makes a transparent wash. And I just paint that on to give it a little bit more burnt umber or yellow or wherever I'm working on the cheese. So it's making this visual mixing here on the canvas instead of mixing it on the palette. And it's looking really good. It gives a lot of light to the painting when you paint this way. So I'm going to move on to the ancient fruit next and I'm going to be doing like washes of different blues and phthalo and greens and then also working on the leaves at the same time, trying to keep that transparency using the gloss glazing liquid. I make a lot of freezer jams and I still constantly have to look up the difference between jam, jelly, preserves, marmalades, fruit butters. And this is going to be a jelly, which is normally made with the juice of fruit instead of the pieces, which is kind of the main difference between jams and jellies. Now, because of that, this jelly is going to be very transparent. There's not stuff floating in it. It's just kind of the juice here inside the jelly. And because of that, I don't have anything I have to worry about painting besides what you can see through the jar. And I'm really liking this alizarin crimson. It's the perfect color for this jelly. And I'm starting to really like the depth of the colors that I'm getting between the darker areas and some of these lighter areas. Now I'm probably gonna work a little bit more on this because it's requiring a lot of drying time in between each layer, but I'm liking it so far. And then I can start to add a highlight on the glass so it looks reflective. In the meantime, I can work on the wooden cap and then also the star drop.
I really like how the wheat looks, but it needs a little bit more depth and shadow. So I'm going to put a little bit on the table behind the ends here so it has the shadow. Not quite as dark as this, but a little bit more like how the cheese has a shadow on the table. And then add a little bit of shading into some of the different stalks of wheat up here, like the ones that sit behind other ones. So you can see that there's different layers to those. And we're done! We have the Grange Table from Stardew Valley. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original painting. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes. And I'll see you again here for another video game painting.